When thinking about the rapid rise of the private space industry, it's not difficult to find an appropriate metaphor. Three, two, zero. Lift off. Over the last decade, the exploitation of space and space technology has transformed into an enterprise increasingly occupied by private industry. Year upon year, we see the number of launch vehicles that climb up and out of Earth's gravity well increasing, carrying with them instruments that add extraordinary value to the economy and our understanding of planet Earth. In 2019, the global revenue generated by space industry was nearly $415 billion, with Morgan Stanley predicting this figure to rush all the way up to $1 trillion by 2040. And this seems to track. The extraordinary potential for space to tackle global problems with all the benefits of that lofty vantage point has drawn the attention of much venture capital investment, which jumped by over 350% in the first quarter of this year compared to 2020. I'm walking along a canal in the Netherlands. Over in that direction is Leiden University, where I study, though the events of the past year have mostly kept me away. Just a short bike ride from the university is the town of Noordwijk. There you will find the Netherlands Space Expo Museum. It sits at the foot of an entire area dedicated to the development of space technology. This space campus is a cluster of over 40 space companies, all huddled around the European Space Agency's Aztec headquarters. The situation here in the Netherlands is reflective of that global push into space. Increasing digitization, along with the floods of data that are flowing out of the Internet of Things, provides a great opportunity for small companies like the ones in Space Campus Nordvag to take advantage of falling prices and the miniaturization of satellite technology. This has allowed many Dutch SMEs to get into the space game. But as the research and development power shifts away from governmental and intergovernmental institutions and into the hands of the entrepreneurial, will it carry with it the responsibility of public engagement? Public engagement, outreach or science communication has come to be considered as an obligation for universities and research institutes over recent years with movements like the third mission seeing scientists commit more and more time and energy to explain the science that they do. And this makes sense. Much of the funding for our academic forays into nature's unknown comes from public money. The population surely deserve to reap the rewards of that research, and for the scientist, it makes good sense to keep the people supplying the cash on side. But with a changing research landscape, not just in space science, but in many disciplines, it remains to be seen whether private industry will continue this legacy of communication, Myself and other researchers at the Astronomy and Society Group of Leiden University are interested in answering this very question for both the space sector and for the biotech industry in the Netherlands. But today we're focusing on the space sector. To shine light on public engagement in private industry, we devised a research methodology where semi-structured interviews were conducted with CEOs, managing directors and business developers of space-related companies in the Netherlands. Selecting the companies from three separate directories, we employed a program of repeated contact attempts, starting with an email that contained an easy-to-use bookable calendar for convenience, and after a few days, follow-up calls were made. Using this approach, we were able to achieve a response rate of more than 35%, consisting of 25 interviews with companies ranging from one employee to thousands. The interviews were of varied length and tone, but all were enlightening by some measure. And of course, there was a smattering of technical hindrances to remind us that we're indeed in 2021. We focused our questions in particular on finding out what types of activities companies performed, the motivations they had for organizing those activities, and the barriers they faced in their attempts to do public engagement. And that pretty much catches you up to where we are now. However, even in these early stages, some trends are emerging. And my experience of conducting these interviews has given me fair insight into the public engagement practices of these Dutch space industries. Let's discuss some of these early findings. Types of activities. The range of activities performed by the companies stretched between simple daily or perhaps weekly social media posts highlighting their latest innovations or newest projects, all the way up to bespoke hackathons, organized for students to use real data and emulate the earth observation work of the company. We found that almost all companies had some sort of a social media presence with LinkedIn being the favored platform. Many companies had their employees perform guest lectures at universities or schools, 
And in other connections to schools, we found that space-related group projects that are managed by the companies were quite common. Events and conferences were frequently attended as well by companies. Many were industry-centric. However, the European Space Agency Open Days, University Open Days, and also air shows were also regularly partaken in outside of COVID times. A common replacement we found for the lack of conferences during COVID were self-organized webinars that often had a more open, less industry-focused approach. Almost all companies had an interest in holding the media spotlight where possible. Most companies reported infrequent interest from the press for interviews and the like, but those that actively cultivated long-standing contact with media actors were seemingly more successful in making appearances in newspapers, magazine, TV, podcasts and radio. Citizen science was entirely absent from the interviewed company's public engagement portfolios, although the company that organized hackathons did report that some former participants had enjoyed the exercises so much that they were forming their own company. Motivations. The motivations cited for engaging with the public were quite diverse, ranging from the fairly obvious profit-driven approach of expanding their client base to a more societally conscious perception of responsibility to either educate the public and create a more STEM capable population, or perhaps to demonstrate to the public how money is being spent, especially considering that the space industry is largely propped up on government grants. Other motivations included aspirations to build an image of trustworthiness to current and potential clients but also to other stakeholders, like residents who live nearby to the company headquarters. A few companies spoke about the morale-boosting effect of public engagement for employees. Getting the opportunity to show off their work in a public forum was considered, in a few instances, to be valuable, but not directly profitable. When asked to rank their motivations in terms of priority, most companies placed the contact with their new clients at the top of their list, but there was a common reluctance to rank hierarchically, as many of their other public engagement activities were deemed to be essential to other aspects of the company and securing new contracts. Barriers. The most common barriers discussed were time and money, with one essentially being synonymous with the other in the business realm. Many companies felt as though they would like to do more public engagement, but could not find the resources to allocate. This was particularly true of small companies who were still in the precarious phase of scaling up their operations. Larger companies seemed less concerned about the resources available, but often focused on a lack of evidence that there was any benefit to the activities that they did. In fact, this was a common theme throughout the interviews. When asked about how they evaluate the success of their communication activities, many companies were at a loss for an effective means to determine success. Some talked about the number of new business leads that came out of an event, or the apparent level of interest from the audience. Others would simply evaluate through retrospective observation and discussion among team members. Though we consistently found that public engagement activities were simply not evaluated at all, as again, the company could not see value in spending time on it. So what's next? Well, first, we need to complete the analysis and write the paper. But it is already becoming clear that this is an industry, in the Netherlands at least, that is enthusiastic about opportunities to engage and excite the public with their science and technology. Only sometimes the resources, the know-how, and the underlying benefit for the company is seemingly not always there or apparent. We're beginning to formulate ideas to action on, things like encouraging collaboration between companies and academic institutions. Also ideas about forming centralized public engagement units developing an infrastructure to make public engagement less of an organizational task for any one company, and also facilitating collaborations with, well, you. You may have been wondering why this presentation about the space industry was appearing in an astronomy conference. Astronomy and space science are very independent fields, and yet in the minds of the public, they are inextricably linked. From a communication standpoint, it seems appropriate to lean into this public perception and encourage collaboration between astronomy and space science institutions for the benefit of both fields and their agendas, as well as the public who are interested in the achievements of each. So now I throw the question to you. How can you help bring the space from just above our heads and the space light years away down to Earth? Thank you.